Hi, welcome to Kaling Dash Tech Lesson 16 in our build of our um, Transit ISP. Okay, in this lesson, we're going to do a continuation of our BGP peering. Um, what I want you, uh, what I want to do is I want to show you the difference between a peering between a directly connected interface, as we've already completed, and a peering between the loopback interfaces, which is normally what would be required given that we stipulate that from a an OS perspective a loopback should never go down because it's a virtual interface not a physical unless of course the box itself goes down um, so uh, without further ado let's have a look at that configuration and see what the differences are with regards to that I mean naturally this is going to be down to your uh, um, upstream ISP as to which interface is utilized okay so Let's go on to our London court. Let's have a quick look at, make sure our BGP is still running. So run, show, BGP, neighbor, and there we go. Okay, as we can see in the state, it's established. Okay, so we're fine. We're exchanging, um, we're exchanging updates there. Okay, um, or advertised packets. Um, right, so, um, that shows that we're utilizing that correctly. So let's do a quick run, show, configuration. Sorry, I'm down a one-handed again. Um, in fact, actually, we won't look at the protocols. We'll look at our complete configuration at the moment that we have because we'll need to point out a couple of things here. Okay. So, uh, one of the first things we need to point out here is that with the loopbacks, we must make sure that there's an address there. So on this particular system, we've got our loopback zero set to this address here, okay? So it's 192.168.1.252, and obviously it's going to have a 32. We don't want it to be involved in any other networks. It's its own complete separate entity, okay? Now... There are two things that we have to ensure are in place for a loopback address to be utilized. Remember what we said before about a directly connected interface from an external BGP perspective? So it's almost similar. We have to make sure that it, it acts in that same way. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to stipulate in our grouping, our BGP group, we will need to stipulate in there that the local address we want to use is the loopback. That's this one. Okay, so we have to stipulate that. We also have to stipulate that it's not a directly connected interface anymore. BGP, remember, works on a full mesh basis. That means everything must connect to everything. That means from the perspective of the receiver's end or the peer, it will not know, or sorry, this end will not know how to connect to the loopback address on the far end. So we have to also tell it a time to live value. Okay, but we'll go through that as we configure it. So let's configure this side first. We'll configure the London call first. So what we've got to do is we're going to delete. We're going to delete this neighbor command that we already have here. Okay, because we won't need that anymore at the moment. So let's get, uh, right, okay, it wants the whole address. Okay, so that's fine. So that's our neighbor command. Done, gotten rid of. So let's commit that. And we'll be able to see that because if we do a, we should have lost our peering. Okay, so we show BGP neighbor and it's gone. There's no, there's nothing there at all anymore because we have no neighbor command anymore. Okay, so we won't even get an active or anything because nothing will be sent out because there's nowhere to send anything two so what's the first thing we have to do well, we have to look at the other end so we know our other end is our internet cloud okay so run show and remember we are looking for the loopback address so if we just do a because it's only a small configuration on here at the moment um, in fact it's very small as you can see So, the address we're looking for, um, I've configured one up. Loopback zero, unit zero, so the address is 246. OK, 
Okay, so let's go back to our London core. Can we ping that address? Run ping 192.168.1.246. No, we can't because there's no root. Now, it's very, very important that we have a root to that address. Otherwise, we cannot and will not be able to get a BGP peering up. Okay, so can we ping the physical interface at the far end? Okay, run, ping, 192.168.1.30. We know we can because that's what we were peering with before. Okay, but we'll just do the test anyway, and there we go. So what we need to do then is we need to do a set routing options st uh, static route to 192.168.1.246 if you remember is what it was but our next hop to get there okay is obviously going to be the dot 30 address so 192 so the f the peering physical interface okay that we're connected to 192.168.1.30 so if you have to do this in your labs or in your live network, remember it is the next hop address is, is going to be the physically connected, whether it's XE or GE interface, okay? Um, and that's, that's it, as simple as that. That's going to be your next hop. So let's commit that. Okay, so we'll commit that. And now we're going to see if we can ping 246 again. Okay, now we can ping 246. So we've completed the first part of it. Okay, so the second part is a little more, a, a little bit more complicated. So first thing to do is our address this end. What is it again? So let's have a look. I know what it is. It's 252, but I just want to show you. Run show config interfaces LO0. Okay, I can just do it like that and it'll show you. So there we go, 252. Okay, so that's what we have to put in as our neighbor. But we have to put a little bit extra in, and I'm going to show you and explain. So set protocols, BGP, group, external peers. Now, we're going to put in the neighbor. The neighbor address is now going to be 192.168.1.2. 246 but now we have to put in our um, multi-hop command because it's more than one hop away all right so we have to add this multi-hop command so we put in here multi-hop okay now here's a bit of information for you uh, the moment you configure multi-hop Junos OS sets a TTL by default to a value of 64. Now we don't want a TTL of 64 because our loopback address that we want to connect to is actually only one hop away, one interface away, that's one hop. So in here, if we notice afterwards, we can go TTL for the session. So we're gonna put in TTL and we're gonna put one because we're just doing one hop. So we're going to the physical interface is one hop onto the next interface, the loopback, okay? So, that sets that up for us. Now we have to set, so we'll do a set protocols. We have to set our um, local address now to be our address on the loopback interface of the London core, okay? So set protocols, BGP, group, external peers, as we know, local, We'll call it local address is as we know 252 so 192.168.1.252 okay now we can commit this we can do a commit check first if you like to make sure but I know it's fine so we'll commit that okay so we are still not going to see any communication going backwards and forwards though because the addressing is all incorrect at the moment at the other end okay so if i do a run show bgp we've actually got neighbor address now so should we, we should be back to either connect or active and we're back to a state of connect and it won't change from that until we do the other end so at the moment we've stated 
at the London core end, we want to use the loopback interface here as the local address. And we want to connect to the loopback address on the remote peer. Okay, so let's go to the remote peer now. There we go. So we're going to do the same on there. We now have to set a route to the other end. So if I do a run, ping, and we know the address is 252.192.168.1.252. No route to host. And also on here, uh, we don't have the routing set up yet. So let's do that now. Set routing options, static route 192.168.1.252 and a next hop of 192.168.1.29. Oh, okay, so there we go. And we're going to commit that and we'll do a check of whether we can ping that. Because remember, we have to be able to ping it. And there we go. So that's the route in place. Now we have to do our BGP grouping. So we do a set. Protocols. BGP group. Uh, external ISP peers. And we're going to say, well, let's put our local address first, which is 246. We know that. Okay. So our local address is 192.168.1.246. Okay. Um, and then what we need to do is we need to do it again. We need to say our neighbor, but it's a multi-hop, remember, because it's more than one hop away. Sorry, we have to put the neighbor address in first. Uh, 192.168.1.252, as we know. Then we use the multi-hop command. Okay, so multi-hop with a time to live of one because we don't want the default of 64. Okay, so we put TTL of one and we commit that. Okay, and now we can, from this side, we can do a run, show, BGP, neighbor. Uh, let's see what happens. So straight away, we get an established. Okay, straight away. And as you can see, we have our um, information up here for our peering. So we've got 252, which we know is the other end. And we've got 246, which we know is this end. Okay, so and there's our ports going out and response back. But it's the eight port that's the important one, the 179 in both directions anyway. Um, okay, so there you can see how we can connect to the loopback of our upstream or even downstream ISP, depending on which way you're um, utilizing this particular network. Okay, um, in the next lesson, hopefully now we can move towards uh, filtering and advertised networks. Okay, take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.